Hey everybody, welcome back to Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com and here on our YouTube channel. And this time out, we're going to do another episode of Inside the Mix. This time we're going to be breaking down the mix of a country pop tune by the artist Lori Cole. Lori is a great country artist. She's got really killer music. All the links are in the description box below. So you could go check out her website and her music and check out what she's got going on. And I want to say thank you for Lori, to Lori for letting us use your song in this session for this mix breakdown. So thanks so much, Lori. Go check her out. Links are in the description box below and you'll be hearing more of her music coming up in the near future on this channel. So before we get started and I break down this mix and kind of show you what I did here, if you like what you see in the video, please consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell and also go out to mixingmusicanalog.com and check out what I have going on over there. That's where you'll see all my mixing and mastering services. And if you're really into mixing and you're into hybrid and you're into analog, stay tuned. Depending on when you're watching this video, it may already be there, but check out mixingmusicanalog.com for our hybrid mixing courses. We're going to be doing a few courses in 2023 around hybrid mixing. Check those out. Links are all in the description box below. Okay, so let's talk about this track. So before we break down the track and I talk to you about the gear and what we use and all the stuff that you guys want to want to hear about. Let's listen to the um, final mix here that uh, that was sent over to Lori. So here we are in Studio One and you'll see we have a print track here. This is the print track. Here is the final mix of Catch Me. So let's uh, give a listen so you can enjoy Catch Me and then um, we'll break it down section by section and I'll give you an overview of what I did for this song here. So here we go. So here's Lori's Cole's Catch Me. Enjoy. Shine. When I get old and the glow 
So there we are. There's Catch Me by Lori Cole. Again, thank you, Lori, for letting us use this in this demonstration. So let's uh, get rid of the print track here and we'll get into some of the nitty gritty of how I process this track. So again, let's take a look first at the session itself. What do we have going on? We have a 32 track session, not too bad. So if we come over here into Studio One, you'll see we have, we start off with a kick track. We have a kick sample, which is what I always add. I added that uh, second, that sample track and, um, and I blended it in with the original kick. Kick sub, snare top, snare sample, same thing. I'm always adding a kick and snare sample um, to every single session I do. And 85% of the time I'll use those samples. Sometimes I don't, it depends, but I always bring it into the template so we have them available to us. And we did use it this time and we're just using Slate Trigger and using some samples um, that come stock with uh, Slate Trigger 2. Snare bottom, hi-hats, a couple of toms, a rack tom and a floor tom, overheads left and right, rooms left and right. We have a ride microphone, uh, bass, two acoustic guitars. We have guitar one, which um, has two microphones on the cabinet, a 57 and a ribbon mic, which are blended together. And then we have guitar two left and right, a couple of steel guitars, two fiddle guitar tracks or fiddle tracks, a B3 left and right, a Rhodes, then a lead vocal, and then two background vocals, a, a high vocal and a low vocal. That's it, pretty straightforward, not a big session. Okay, so the only things that I added were the kick sample and the snare sample, and again, those are just blended in with um, the slate plugins or the slate samples. So let's talk a little bit about the signal flow. We'll start on the master bus. So on the master bus, we have, um, and I'll throw some Im images on the screen so you can see some of the settings. Um, we go from um, the insert point on the master bus. We're going to the SSL Fusion, and then from there we're going to the Neve. Uh, 542 tape emulators. We're using the blue circuit on this particular song. Um, and then from there, we're going to the Audio Game Labs um, Empress EQ, the two beep equalizer, um, which is really great, by the way. Check out the unboxing video that I have on that. And by the time you're watching this, there may even be a full review on the on the Pultec style EQ tube equalizer by Audio Gain Labs. Um, it's a little unique in that it has a mid-band, which is unlike a Pultec. It's got a couple of bell and shelving curve changing features, as well as an additional tube drive circuit um, on that EQ, which just makes it magical. It's really awesome. And all that stuff is engaged on this track to really give some extra saturation and color to this mix out of the EQ, it's coming to the bus compressor here on the console, and we are using a two to one ratio with a fairly slow attack, um, auto release, and we're compressing about four dB, which is pretty standard on the console, and then I just fine tune it from, from mix to mix, but that's pretty standard stuff. Um, as far as the way we have it laid out on the console, we have all our drums down here, and then we have bass, then we have our guitars, and then our, uh, our keys, fiddles, then lead vocals and background vocals. Everything is being routed into our matrix here for um, busing. So we have a drum bus, a bass bus, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, fiddles, keys, lead vocals, background vocals. Um, so let's talk about, start with the drums. We'll just start with the drums. So here is our kind of finished drum sound here. And I'll walk you through kind of the gear that I use. So if we solo up our drums, here's our drum sound. Oop. First, let me... solo this up so you can actually hear something. That would be great, right, Dave? Okay, so on the drums, as far as um, other than EQ that's happening on, on the individual channels, obviously, there is no uh, compression happening on the drums until we get to the drum bus. So on the drum bus, we're compressing with the West Audio NG bus compressor, which I could probably bring up here and uh, show you on the screen here in a second. And again, this is all digitally controlled with a plugin, as you guys know. So here on the NG bus compressor, Again, we're using um, a two to one ratio. We're compressing maybe three, four dB of compression. I'm using the iron circuit here to add some color and some flavor to this. And as well as some of the total harmonic distortion circuit, we got a 60 Hertz side chain in there. So the kick drum is not really affecting the bus compressor. So I can bypass it here. So we'll start with it and I'll take it away so you can hear it.
So it's just giving a little bit more sustain to the snare. You can hear the overheads a little bit more, a little bit more thickness on the kick. Again, it's not overly compressed because this particular song was played really well, really consistent. And so I didn't really feel like I needed to compress even the snare, which is usually a 50-50 shot depending on the drum performance. But this one, it sounded fine. So the NG bus compressor is doing all of the compression and the iron circuit and the total harmonic distortion is adding to some of the richness and some of the density of the drums, which is great. Um, and then from there, we are going to the um, Trident uh, 80Bs, the EQs for those. And on those, I believe we're doing a little bit of a boost at around 50 Hertz, doing quite a bit at 5K to really get this thing, this the snare that kind of cut through. Um, and I believe we're taking a tiny bit out at 400 that's all we're doing there so if i play back the drums i can go over to the rack and i can just take the eqs in and out so you can hear it so here's with it So it really brightens it up a lot. And in solo, it sounds a little bit too much 5K, but in the mix, it sounds really, really good. So that is the drums. Pretty straightforward. Nothing really out of the ordinary there. The drums, again, this whole song was recorded so well that it's just, you know, it, part of uh, the process here for me was stay out of the way. Don't just be adding a bunch of stuff for the sake of adding a bunch of stuff. I just wanted to kind of blend it and just enhance things a little. Also on the tom tracks, the floor tom and the rack tom, we are using the Aphex 204s on those, which pretty much are standard on every mix. I use those on toms. They take any tom, no matter how well it's recorded, and just makes it sound a little bit better. So that's going on there. You can check out the review on the Aphex on the channel. Did a whole review on that particular unit. Um, then we get down to bass, and bass is pretty straightforward here. If we solo up our bass here. Tiny bit of EQ on the bass um, at around one and a half K and also a little bit around 800, just a tiny bit. Um, and then we're going to the LA2 or the um, Opto Compressor by Wes, by Wes Audio, the Opto Compressor by Audioscape, the LA2. And we're doing probably seven to eight dB of compression on this. And I'll just take it in and out of the circuit if you wanna hear it. Again, you can tell this bass was compressed on the way in as well. So it already had some compression on it, but it just kind of tightens it up and thickens up the bottom a little bit. Again, adding a little bit of color to it, just doing what an LA-2A style compressor does on a bass. It just kind of glues it together and thickens it up. And that was the bass. Again, pretty straightforward. So if we go, uh, yeah, so then from there, we have um, acoustic guitars. There's two acoustic guitars that are panned uh, left, hard, left and right. We can uh, play those back here for you. Just okay, and on that, we have a little bit of reverb as well. We're using the uh, Audioscape XL305R, which I use on every single mix. All the guitars, acoustic guitars, electric guitars, the fiddles, the keys, the lead vocals, and the background vocals are all getting a little bit of that Spring Reverb by Audioscape, which sounds wonderful. Um, I even put a little bit of it on the overheads in the rooms, and that's it. The rest of the drums are pretty dry, um, but it's just a little bit there. So it's there on the acoustics, and the acoustics are being routed down to an acoustic guitar bus, and that's where I'm using compression, and I'm using the Wes Audio Rhea for that compression, which is the very Mu uh, compressor by Wes Audio. Again, wonderful compressor. Bring that up on the screen here so you can see it. So here we go and I'll bypass it, take it in and out.
So it smooths out those transients just a little bit. And again, on the Wes Audio uh, gear, I'm using the Total Harmonic Distortion on high just to add a little bit of color there. It's kind of that nice little rhythm, funky kind of uh, guitar part throughout the entire track. And I just wanted to tame it a little bit. Once again, you could hear that this was compressed slightly on the way in. It's not super, super dynamic. So again, just trying to catch those peaks and tuck it in, it sounds really good. So this is a great compressor. The Wes Audio, the Very Mew, Rhea. Sounds wonderful on acoustic guitars. Sounds great on pianos too. Um, even bass, but pianos and acoustics is typically where I'll use this more times than not. Um, so that was the acoustic guitar. Now for the electric guitars, again, we have two sets of electrics. We have one set of guitars that a, a guitar that has a 57 mic and a ribbon mic that I kind of blended together and then we have guitar two which is just playing the heavy uh, rhythm parts throughout the track um, and those are all coming down to a bus and I don't even believe are those yeah we didn't even compress those there was really no reason to compress them at all but here it is so you can hear what those tracks are doing <laughs> Just a little bit of that spring reverb by the Audioscape XL305 and a little bit of EQ. But again, it didn't really sound like it needed it. It's got kind of that telly type of a sound and it just sounded great on its own. It sat in the track really well. There was really no reason to compress it. That's the four guitars playing together. If I just give you the 57s and the ribbons. <laughs> And then here's the other two guitars, Guitar 2. So those two guitars, when you take those two and put back the other guitar that plays the little the telly relic. Again, sounds great. Again, compressed on the way in. You can tell just by listening to it. So it didn't really need any other compression. Now for the steel guitars, we did, let's see, the, we had two steel guitar tracks here that are just playing little licks and little fills along the way. Again, those just had some EQ. There was um, a tiny bit of compression being used um, on a couple of the SSL uh, dynamics, the E-Series dynamics, just kind of kissing the needle, no big deal. Again, they sounded pretty good on their own, so I didn't over compress them. Um, you could kind of hear an example of it here where we got it. So just those nice little licks in there, getting just a tiny bit of compression and some EQ, nothing else going on with that. After that, we have the fiddles, fiddle one, fiddle two, both of those are going after some EQ on the board, both of those are going to SSL E-Series Dynamics as well. Again, doing about three to six dB of compression because we have a fiddle solo in here as well and a fiddle could get really dynamic. So if we kind of play that up for you. So doing a fast attack, about three to six dB of compression um, and just kind of tucking it in so it doesn't get too crazy, too dynamic and just blend it in into the track. And there's not even a lot of top end EQ on this. There's a little bit at around 10K and that's really about it on the two fiddles. Then we go to the B3. We have a B3 left and a B3 right. Um, both of those are being routed down to a keyboards bus along with the uh, Rhodes. And on that, we are using some compression there. Again, we're using another Wes Audio product. We're using the Wes Audio Dione uh, compressor, which is a VCA style, like an SSL on steroids. That's what we're kind of doing there. And again, we're doing a fairly fast attack and we're doing an auto release and we're doing about a four to one ratio. So if we kind of solo this up a little, you can hear a little bit of what's going on there.
about five to eight dB of compression, especially when the uh, when the roads kind of gets a little dynamic. But the but the B3 is just playing little little licks, little lines. Again, no big deal. I love the the Dion, like all the other West Audio stuff, because we're using the total harmonic distortion circuit, which gives it a little bit more pizzazz, if you will. And then lastly, we have the vocal tracks. So the lead vocal track, we are using uh, for equipment, we're using the Audioscape 76A, and then we're going into the Pultec, or the Audioscape Pultec EQP. So if we kind of bring up our vocal here. And a little bit of the Audioscape reverb, as I said. Sudden I'm a tan, but when the party's over and the sun comes up, are you gonna be gone again? I got deja vu, I know you, this ain't my first rodeo. So we're compressing that pretty heavily. Probably, it looks like about 7 to 10 dB of compression. And then we're hitting the EQ pretty good. We got a lot of top-end boost there. I'll put the image on the screen at one point so you can see the settings. But let me take the insert in and out, which will take away the EQ as well as the compressor, so you can hear it. I want it just as bad as you, but there's one thing I want to know. Are you going to catch me when I'm falling? Will you put your arms out when I'm stumbling? Are you going to be there when I need you to be? So really it just brings the vocal a little bit more forward and where she gets a little aggressive at the beginning of every phrase, it kind of tucks it in. And what I love about the Audioscape Pultec, it almost doesn't sound like you put any EQ on it. It just kind of smooths out the top end a little bit, which I really like. So that's the lead vocal. Again, pretty straightforward, no delay on it at all. Just put a little bit of the reverb on it. I wanted that vocal to sit right up front and sound a little on the dry side, which is what I was kind of going for. And then last, we have two background vocals. And again, the background vocals are going down to a bus. And on that bus, we are compressing it with the, um, the DBX or the, the Audioscape 260 VU, the DBX stereo compressor. Sounds great. And we're compressing them pretty, pretty heavily uh, on those as well. But here's the background vocals so you can hear them in context. And there's a little bit of reverb on that as well. Are you going to catch me? When I'm falling, will you put your arms out when I'm stumbling? Are you going to be there? So we have a female on the left, the male on the right, blended in with Lori's lead vocal. We're compressing probably 15 dB on those, on those, um, on those background vocals, and it just kind of sits them right up there. Sounds great. That's a compressor that you can push really hard, and it doesn't seem like you could almost peg the needle on that 260 VU. And on something like this, it just sounds great. The more you hit it, the harder you hit it, the better it sounds. So if I bring her lead vocals in with those background vocals, kind of give you um, a feel of the blend. Here we go. I want it just as bad as you, but there's one thing I want to know. Are you going to catch me when I'm falling? Will you put your arms out? When I'm stumbling. Sounds great. Now, if you bring everything back in the context of the mix. So it sounds really good. So it's just, it was just a matter of just blending them in. So this mix came together pretty quick. And, and part of what um, what works for this mix is to stay out of the way. When you have something that is really well recorded like this, and there's obviously with some compression on a lot of these tracks, as I mentioned during the recording process, you could hear it. The things already came in pretty level. There wasn't anything that was ultra dynamic that needed to be a ton of compression. All the compression that I did use for the most part was more or less to, yes, control some of the dynamics where it needed, but more or less to really kind of color the track and add some color to it and some and some vibe to it as well especially when you get down to the 542s on the master bus and even the empress eq just bringing in the extra tube circuit it just dresses it up and it makes it sound a little bit more interesting and that was it simple simple really simple tune to mix because it's a great song well written well recorded by a great artist 
And those are the projects that I like to work on. Don't we wish we always get to work on projects such as this? So that's kind of a breakdown of Lori Cole's Catch Me. Um, again, if you want to um, hear more about Lori Cole's music, definitely check out the links in the description box below. And as I said earlier, if you're into mixing, you're, you're into learning the craft of mixing, especially if you work all on the box of plugins, and you want to mix songs like this, we have a, a couple of Lori Cole songs we're going to mix uh, this year, as well as other great artists. Check out MixingMadeEasy.net and uh, inquire about becoming a member today and you'll get an opportunity to mix this quality of uh, track, which is really, really great because we have great recorded tracks that let you really focus in on the engineering, on the EQ and the compression and how to kind of get everything to blend together because you're mixing and you're not fixing and that's always a great thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed listening to Catch Me by Lori Cole. Again, like, share, subscribe, leave comments below. Go show Lori some love. And until the next Inside the Mix episode, I've been Dave with Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com. Thank you so very much for watching me today, everybody. And I'll see you guys soon.